Welcome to the Airflow Podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Thomas, and this is the place where kingdom heirs go to be informed and inspired. So sit back, relax, and flow with me. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a new edition of the Airflow Podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Thomas, and I'm excited to be back. It's been a while uh, since I've been had a chance to do a new podcast. Um, I've, I've been under the weather for a little bit, traveling and under the weather for the past few weeks. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do was come on here and sound nasally, and, and that just wouldn't be cool. I was having these crazy coughing spells, but... Uh, nevertheless, I'm back feeling better, feeling uh, rejuvenated now. So uh, it's just time to get back into things. And with today's topic and just thinking about, as always, I look at my life, I look at different situations, different things. And I say, you know what, that's something I definitely want to bring forth to the podcast and talk to to my people about. Um, and that is today uh with the, what i want to talk about is you know really who who is your circle of influence who are the people that are closest to you um that that helps you be who you are and we're in an age where i know a lot of people say i'm my own person i'm hey, you're supposed to be your own per- per- person but there are people who are who should be in your circle of influence your, you hear people say your sphere of influence who are those people who are those people that are around you that are helping you to grow? Do you have anybody to help you to grow? Um, you know, there's always the thing that, you know, you hear people say, if you're the biggest fish, you know, if you're the biggest fish in, in the small pond, then, you know, you're, you're, you you're, you're limiting yourself, you know, or they say, if you're the smartest person in, in your group, the people that you're closest to, or that you spend the most time with, then, you know, it's time for you to expand, because being able to expand and, and get into and to grow and go into bigger places, you've got to have different people around you. And it's not to say that you can't be friends with people, you know, but you have to look at relationships almost to the place of what value are these people bringing? Are they friends from the past and you guys are good and they help remind you of, of where you came from to keep you grounded? And that's cool. But when you talk about I need to, you know, you have ambitions and goals and things, sometimes the people who you grew up with or the people that you have been around the most, you know, in, in this current stage of your life, they may not be at that place. They may not have that mentality. And you have to be able to we have to be able to step away from that and say, you know what, I love you, but I need to have and spend my time with other people. And you're going to get pushed back. You're going to get people to say you've changed, you switched up. Now you big time. You don't have you don't have, you know, time to spend around to spend with me or us or, you know, our group. You know, it's like you just kind of blew up and did, left us behind. But you've got to look at it. We've got to look at it. What's best for us? What's best for for ourselves? How can we grow? Are the people that are around us helping us grow? Or are they just keep? Are we just staying at a steady state and we're not moving anywhere? What's helping us move the needle in our lives? You know, and and, and, you know, obviously, as as believers, you know, we have a purpose and plan for our lives that God has already preordained. It's our job to go out there and seek it and continue to walk and move forward. And we can't do that because there are some people who are just content with where they are in lives, and we can't be mad at them. But we can't also allow that to allow those folks to keep us stagnant. And it's not their fault. It's our fault because it's it's our job. If we have the vision, if we have the the capacity to want to grow and develop and build ourselves to be, you know, better versions, then it's our job to go out there and do it. But the question is, do you have the resources around you to do that? Do you have those people that can help grow you and can help build you and take you to different places, you know, can use their talents to focus on different things that you can trust 
you know, and I always go back to thinking about LeBron James. Now, LeBron James has a small circle of friends that he has helped to build his businesses, his empire. His best, some of his best friends are sports agents now. They learned the game, you know, they, they figured out how to maneuver around. And now, you know, his one of his closest friends, Rich Paul, owns one of the biggest uh, sports agencies that's doing not just basketball, but other sports. And you say to yourself, you know, well, why did he do that? Because he saw that he wanted to add value to LeBron and he wanted to add value to his own life. Now, he's out building a, a huge business. He's out doing all these things. And helping LeBron grow his brand. And in the same thing, building himself up. He learned, he LeBron helped use his talents and things to say, look, if y'all going to be around me, we're going to have to build. I need y'all to bring some value to the table. And they brought, they're bringing value. Now, he has friends that he hooks up with, you know, just to hang out and just, you know, reminisce and this, that, and the other. I mean, everybody has that group. And, it's, and you have people... You know, you're not shedding that, but for those that that have the vision and understand where you're trying to go and you can trust, you have to build with them. Can they help you get to that next place? Can they go off on their own, do do research and grow and develop and, and be what you would need them to be? Do they see the opportunity in, in helping you grow? Because you, you need those kind of people around. We need them. We need the people who are going to challenge us in our thinking, challenge us in, in how we do things. Call us for our call us on our stuff. I, I can tell you, you know, sometimes even with and it's not even people outside my house. I mean, my wife, my kids, I mean, they they call me on my stuff and, and sometimes it hurts and sometimes it bothers me. And sometimes you get a little challenged by it, but I appreciate it. I once said, you know, one of the greatest things I love about my wife is she is her honesty. You know, with me, she's going to tell me she's honest. And I think I might have said her brutal honesty, but it is not necessarily brutal. But I mean, she she will tell you straight up with no chaser like this is what it is. So my goal and my my what I'm really trying to make sure that we are that I'm doing with my life is finding areas where I may not be as strong and then in those areas looking to find out who do I have around me that can help me build that and if I don't have those resources around me that I need to go find them because there are things that I'm strong at that I don't need help with growing but there's areas that I recognize you know I need to I need to 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 build that because the goal is to be a strong well-rounded person so where are those gaps what are those things that I'm not good at? Are there people that I can have to, that are good at those things that can help me build what it is that I need to build? It's not my job to do everything, but, you know, use my talents and use everything that God has given me, the skills that I've developed to grow and, and take take myself to a new place, but then have people around me that can help me do that. And sometimes that's that is a challenge because for me, I know I always want to help people. I want people to, you know, understand where, you know, where I'm trying to go and, you know, see the vision that I see. And everybody won't see that. Everybody won't understand the business that you're trying to build. Everybody won't understand the, the that you're using money, and investing in and doing things. So everybody doesn't get that. You know, it, it's it's and, and it's not for everybody to get. But the, the challenge is we cannot waste so much time and re so many so much time of our, our so much of our time and resources trying to convince people to to follow us or to buy into the vision or dream that that has been given to us because some people just won't do it. And, and, and sometimes it is the ones that's closest to you. Sometimes it is family. Sometimes it's people that you would think, like, man, they will follow us. And there are people that are just not going to do it. There's so many times I see um, I see it on social media, you know, memes where people will say, you know, if I say I got a new job, you get a million likes and hearts and comments and this, that and other. If I say, hey, I started a new business. Everybody's like, yeah, you know, it's not as well received. And, you know, I, I start thinking to myself, well, why is that? Now, I've got people around me that will root you on 
anything that you're doing positive, they're going to root you on. They're going to they're going to cheer. And those are the people that you need. And if there, there may be some people around you that that, you know, they may want to get more information, but they're still going to support. They're going to support. They're going to share. They're going to do those kind of things. And, that, and that's cool. But then there's those people around you that just won't get it. They just don't understand. And it's not because, you know, they're hating on you or they don't want you to grow or they don't want you to pass them up. And, and there is some of that at times. But it's just they they just don't have the capacity at that point in their lives to really understand the importance of what you're doing. You know, as we talk about building businesses or, you know, creating generational wealth coming off of the worldly system and really focusing on the kingdom system. And what does that mean? Everybody's not going to be along for that journey. And that's tough. That's tough. That's difficult. That that's hard for a lot of people to really fathom because, you know, it's like, I want all my family to be there. I want, it's like going to heaven, you know, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can so I can get to heaven. But then you also want all your family to get there, all the people that you're close with to get there. And just everybody's, unfortunately, they're not going to make it. But that doesn't mean I don't continue to try. It doesn't mean I don't continue to to testify about my life and, and how my life is growing and the things that I've done well or, or you know, and, and the challenges that I've had and how I overcame them. That's a part of your journey. So you may have people that's around you that, that don't care about all that. You may have people around you that look at, you know, the circumstances that 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 you're in and they don't see it as something that they care about or they they that they think that they can contribute to. And they may not be a part of that. And, and that's OK. I think we have to start getting to a place of understanding that. Honestly, you know, everybody is not going to go to that next level, whatever that next place is. Everybody's not going to go there with you. Everybody's not going to understand the the hair shop that you want to start or the I say hair shop, the hair salon that you want to open up. Everybody's not going to get that. Everybody's not going to understand, you know, the the janitorial service that you want to start. They're not going to understand the investment group that you're building that you want to put put together. They're not going to get that. They're not going to understand, you know, financial services and, and, and things of that nature. They, they 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 some people just understand going into a place, working for somebody and then getting a paycheck, a steady paycheck. So when you start talking about businesses and things like that, like why would you want to leave a job that you've been working at that's paying you X amount of money and it's a good company and you got benefits and all that? Why would you want to leave to do something different? You know, that that those questions sometimes used to frustrate me. But now that I'm getting older, it's like I understand more and more. It's just because they don't have the same level of revelation that I have. And it doesn't mean that they're bad people. But you can't anchor yourself to those folks when it comes down when it comes down to building for your future. You've got to get around people and personalities and abilities that can help take you that can fill in those gaps and people who are already where you're trying to go. People who are who are two steps ahead of where you're two stages ahead of where you're trying to go. Three stages, you know, what, what is your goal? Who are your mentors? Who are those people that you say, if I can get to that status, that level, I'm, I know that I've achieved something. And, and you're going to find out that that's a moving target. But at least you it's a goal. It's, it's something that you work towards. You know, who are those people you look at? And it's not necessarily always about how much cash you have in the bank or how many cars you have or all that other superficial stuff. I mean, that's cool. But it, but what does success look like for you? Is it freedom to be able to go and, and hang out with your kids, grandkids or whatever without having to worry about punching a clock? Is it freedom to say, you know, I can work from home? You know, but at one point, my goal was to have a job where I can work from home and just have that freedom to work from home if I wanted to. And if I, you know, I can work whatever hours I needed to, as long as I got the job jo job done within a certain time, you know, I, I have flexibility. 
And when I got flexibility, you know, I can work from home because it got to a place where I can work from home sometimes. And it was like, yeah, that was cool. I like having the ability if something comes up, people, people come to the house to fix something. I can work from home then. And that was cool. Then it got to the place like, man, I'm, you know, I'm tired of coming to the office. I mean, it was a gradual change. But as the target kept moving and I kept surrounding myself with people who are talking to people who are doing things at a different place you know it's like well how did you get this how do how do you get this job working from home or you have flexibility working from home how did you do that picking people's brains like you know what is it that you do what how, how did you get to this position oh you became a manager and as a manager you have flexibility because you don't necessarily be in the office okay well that may be something you need to look into and then I figured out what it took to become a manager. I became a manager. But now I'm at a place where I'm a manager. I work from home full time. But I, I always knew that my goal is still to not be latched on to a company. I, I'm, I'm so grateful for the, the companies that I've worked for. I'm thankful for the salaries that they're paying me. But I know that's not my that's not my end goal to continue to work for companies and help them make money and, and grow and develop for the shareholders and the executives of the company to get these huge bonuses. You know, it's like, that's cool. You know, I get a little piece of that, but I want to develop my own. So, you know, the previous company I worked for, there was a gentleman, uh, I'll just say Steve. And, you know, Steve was, he's, he's a Caucasian gentleman, you know, and he talked to me about, we were on a trip in Dallas and, you know, Steve just started talking to me about, you know, creating passive income, you know, and, and it was interesting because, you know, I talk about this a lot. My my man of God, my pastor, Apostle Amos O. Howard Sr. always talks to us, you know, the congregation and to me and to the men and just different people. He always talks about, you know, financial success and what it looks like to be uh, debt free living and all of those things. So, you know, I, I've been hearing it from him, but then here it is that I have this gentleman that I work with and I say I work with, I mean, he smart guy, very intelligent, but he and I were in Dallas and we just started talking about, you know, future. He was like, yeah, he was like, I'm at a place right now where my passive streams of income outside of my work have surpassed what I make at my job. He was like, that is a different feeling. He was like, I, and I asked him, I said, well, how long do you plan on doing this? He was like, you know, I don't know. Because when I got to this place, it made me think about my job a little differently. And he was like, it's, 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 it's like, you know, at any point you can walk away from this, but you don't, you don't look at the job anymore as I have to do this to pay my bills. I have to do this so that my family can live the way they need to live. And this is important because I'm saying if we are surrounding ourselves around people who are in places or are doing things at a level that we will that we desire to do things that this is these are the conversations. This is the information, information, inspiration that we want, that we need to hear. And he was just telling me about you know, rental properties and all this other stuff that he was doing outside of here, just little passive streams here and there. And it was making And I know this gentleman was making over six figures. And so it just got me to thinking, it was like, man, this is just re this is just reaffirming, you know, what I've been learning and hearing that. And so I started to pick his brain and he would give me books to read and, and I would read them about different things the same way as, as Apostle Howard gave us books to read and do things. And, and, and so now I tap into those relationships. I tap into that and find out, you know, he, him and his family bought a drive in theater and they were doing that. Now they're moving on to something else. And it's like, man, that, but that is what that that's the exposure. And that's being around certain people. And I'll use this again, you know, this is one of, you know, Apostle Howard's kind of life wisdom keys, but you know, expose your, expand your expectation. And when that expectation is expanded, you know, when you're exposed and an expectation becomes expanded, now you start to, to research and do things and, and see that you can be at a different level, but it takes having people 
who are around you that you can touch, you can reach out to, and you can have some level of relationship with to show you how that looks like. You know, and I, I, I'm lucky to have people like that. And it's, it's a, it's a constant thing. You know, I'm not, my family and I, we're not in the same place we were 10 years ago. You know, and, and we weren't in the same place we were 10 years before that. There's been an evolution, but part of that has been growth, our internal growth, and then being around people who are helping us. Now, we still have friends that we've been friends with for a long time, and we hang out with them, and and we we we, you know, spend time with them and do all that good stuff. But at the same time, we know that we still have a mission. We still have our goals that we're shooting for. And that's to be not only debt free, which we are debt free, but it's also to be financially free and create the generational wealth for our family, for the kingdom. That is where we want to be at. Now, we're flexible. We can work from anywhere in the world if we want to because of our jobs. But then when you take away that point to say, you know what, I don't have to rely on my job. I can think back to Steve and I know I've been around people that can say, I, I can, I don't have to work. I've got, a, I got a guy that I used to, that I went to TSU with and, you know, he was just sharing with me and others that through his crypto investments and, in, and, in, in things and how he built these, these farming rigs and all this mining rigs and all these things, he was able to supplement his income. When I say supplement, he was able to match with the, the income that he was making on his job. And actually surpass that. So, again, it's like, man, you know, you start looking at all these different ways and, and it's a combination of things. But it's being around people uh, that have your answer, being around people who have your answer and not being afraid to cultivate those relationships so that's why I say who's in your circle? Who are those people that you can reach out to, that you can spend time with, that that can mentor you or you can shadow them? You can, you know, and it's it's, it's it takes work because everybody's not just going to, you know, when you get mentored, you're going to be on their time, you know, or you may have people who you have close connection with that are doing things that you are interested in doing or, or living in a way. You know, don't be afraid to to don't be afraid or too shame or too prideful to, to reach out and ask them. You know, I love it that there's this guy on TikTok and he sees people driving fancy cars and he always goes up to him and say, hey, you know, that's a nice car. What can I ask you? What do you do for a living? And you always hear people. Uh, I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm an investor. I do this. I do that. You know, blah, blah, blah. But it's just interesting because the thing that caught his eye, obviously, was these expensive cars. But he took it a step further to ask, like, well, what do you do? And some of the people said, hey, you know, come jump in. I'll show you what I do, you know, or they're walking. I mean, he actually had people that was just like, hey, yeah, you're the TikTok guy. Let me show you. Let me walk you through. This is what I do. Blah, blah, blah. This one guy was like, he buys exotic cars and rents them out. And he took them out, took them to the dealer, the place where he has his cars and went through the whole process of it. And he was like, I just keep buying, you know, I started off with one car and, and rented it out and, you know, started making money from that and got another car, another car and just kept doing it until you have a fleet of exotic cars that people can rent. And he let the guy take, he was like, hey, you can take the car for the day. But it was just because he was willing to ask that question. He was willing to submit himself to to learn uh, from that person. And sometimes, you know, it as much stuff that is as much stuff as there is out there on the internet and there's a ton of stuff on the internet to learn there you can youtube and google almost everything but there's nothing like getting the hands-on experience or getting that personal touch when you're learning something having somebody to actually mentor you and walk and, and take their time to walk you through how you can do things you know you always see where people say you know, would you rather have five hundred thousand dollars or have a lunch date with, um, you know, they say Jay Z, but you know Warren Buffett or, you know, some of these billionaire billionaires out there, and a lot of people will say, well, you know, I would want to sit and have the lunch because with that I can take notes, I can learn, I can get some key tips, and if I can take those tips and apply them 
you know, that can change my life. But people miss the value. They're just thinking, I'll take 500000 and I'll just throw it over here and invest it and blah, blah, blah. I can, I can look up online and find investments. Yeah, you could. But now you're minimizing the, the, you're minimizing the relationship. You're minimizing what you're getting because if that person was willing to sit down with you and share knowledge with you and they know that's what you're there for, to get knowledge. Sometimes that knowledge is price is priceless. You can take that. And even if it costs you something just to, just for his time, if it's if he said, look, it's ten thousand dollars, we'll sit down for two hours, have lunch. I'll break down some stuff of how I think about investing, blah, 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 whatever, whatever, you know, and that's what you get. And, you know, you say you can do that or I can give you five hundred thousand. Most of us have not even taken the time to write out what we would actually do if somebody gave us five hundred thousand dollars. Some of us don't even know how to manage the money we have today. So saying that somebody gave you five hundred thousand dollars and I'm going to take that and flip it. It sounds good, but you can't even take five hundred dollars and flip it. So why do you think you're going to be able to take five hundred thousand dollars and flip it? But if I can submit myself, listen and learn, I can develop it and and figure out loud. Like now I, I, I have I spent some money to have this lunch with this person and, and get these nuggets. If I apply them and, and, and start where I am, I can be just as successful as a lot of people. I mean, people thought it was crazy. Jay-Z did that. He went and talked to Warren Buffett. And, and you look at a lot of these these entertainers and rappers, especially now, you see they're doing more investing. Now, they still go and splurge money, but they're talking to people who who have been financially free for years. They're having these sit-down conversations. They're talking to them about how to move money into different kind of corporations, starting trust and doing all that stuff. This is stuff that we never talked about. We just be like, oh, I got paid. You know, I just dropped this money on this funeral, blah, 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 because I got money. You know, I, I just have it to spend. And that's cool. You you live like that, but you got to maintain that lifestyle. You got to pay taxes. You have to be able to to continue to do this. So finding out how can I leverage the money that I have to do more for me without without having to do as much work. People talk about all the time. Well, how is it that Donald Trump can only pay seven hundred something dollars for taxes? He had people around him that showed him this is what you need to do. And he and he did it. And, and this is why he only had to pay X amount. And we're sitting here paying you know, we're paying thousands of dollars or we're getting back a refund check of this much, but we're not understanding that, you know, we're missing out. Now, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm not going to tell you the amount of money, but let's just say this. We paid, my wife and I paid to have somebody do our taxes. Now, last year we had to pay a lot of money for us because we went from not having to pay anything, getting refund checks and it kept reducing, but we kept increasing. God kept increasing us. And we got to a place where we were doing our taxes ourselves and it was fr kind of frustrating where we were trying to save a little bit of money. Right. Like we're going to save some money and do it ourselves. So turbo tax. Here we go. We pay a little whatever little fee, do it ourselves. And so last year, like I said, we had to pay a bunch of money this year. You know, we said we're going to go back to our tax, you know, our, our CPA um, that we did dealt with before this firm. And we got a different guy. But in that process, you know, I learned so much and. He shared that much. So me paying that little bit of money, my wife and I paying that money gave us insight on some things and we wound up being better off in our taxes than we thought. Why is that? You know, yes, it's blessing. Yes, it's a blessing. And, and you know, I, I thank God for it. You know, we were definitely rejoicing with that. But it's also the point of understanding that we had to put ourselves in a situation. The reason why we knew about this this firm and, and having somebody prepare our taxes and, and the things that we're also looking to do is because our connection with our man of God, because he's in a place where we want to be. So he's shared things. He's he's mentored us in different things. He's you know, but that's part of the connection. That's part of having people around you and cultivating those relationships. And it doesn't have to be that you have to be in front of those people all the time. 
we got to go out every day and hang out. We talk on the phone. It may not be that. It could be just, hey, you know, I, I shoot a text or a phone call, email, you know, how you doing? You know, this, that, and the other. Hey, I got some information for you, this, that, or the other, you know, and go from there. I mean, he shared with me a stock tip that he got from somebody else. Like, hey, looking, looking, putting some money into this particular stock. This isn't some insider trader thing, but he just knew about this company because, you know, somebody that he follows as a mentor for him when it comes to businesses and leadership and things of that nature gave him and say, hey, this is a stock that we, you know, we've been working with this company and we believe that this stock is getting ready to blow up. And it did. You know, but that that is those are things that those are benefits of relationships and having the right relationship. So I'm not saying that you should be a user and only get in relationships with certain things. But understand that every relationship, there's a purpose to every relationship that we have. So that's why I say who's in your circle. When you start making money, you always hear people say you need to have a lawyer. You need to have um, a, a financial, like a CPA, a financial advisor. You need to have all those people on your team at all times. Is it going to cost you some money? Yes. But it, they, the money that they save you is so important. Now, those are relationships that you're paying for, but they have value. Even the relationships that you have that don't cost you anything in terms of a financial value, there's friendships that you have. And, and all of us have those friends that are just going to tell you, tell you things how it is. They're going to they're gonna be honest with you. And sometimes you don't want to deal with them, but those are the best ones to have. Because at least I know that they love me enough and care enough about me to not be a yes man. See, I don't I don't care about having people around me that are just telling me, oh, you're doing a great job and make me feel good. I mean, that's cool to have that balance. And you do have some friends that can can flip. But you also have some people to say, hey, this ain't this ain't where you're supposed to be, you know, and they may not even have the same goals as you. But they know. But you've been sharing your goals with them. And they're like, look. This is not where you want to be. You said you want to be here, here and here. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. And they hold you accountable for it. Those are people you want. It's going to be uncomfortable. But I would rather be, hear that from somebody I love that I know has my back versus, you know, hearing it from somebody who doesn't even care about me. And they don't care whether I pass or I, I fail or I succeed. They don't care. So. Th those are the, that, that's what we really need to take our time and focus on cultivating good relationships. Who's in your circle? Who's who's in your sphere of influence? Who are you influencing? Because you believe it or not, you're influencing somebody. There are people that are watching you. There are people who are looking at what you can do, looking at what you're doing in your life. You think that, oh, there's so many levels I need to go. But there's people who are not at your level. They're like, man, I wish I, I can't wait till I get there. So you don't understand that by you continuing to grow, you're helping others grow. Your kids, you know, I, I've, I've had younger cousins that have told me, you know, that they watch me and they appreciate the things that I've done because it's helping them. It gives them something to shoot for. And here I am thinking like, man, I'm just trying to get to this level. And you telling me, but you never know. You never know who's watching. You never know who's following you. And it may not be somebody that you're actively just mentoring, but indirectly you are. But they they're and they're reaching out to you sometimes because they see that that you have you have what they desire, not things, but just peace in your life, good relationships, things of that nature. People want that. They desire that. Most people do. So. That's really where I want to end it at. Um, you know, the goal is always find people, have people around you that's going to help you grow in every aspect. I'm not just talking financial, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially. That's going to challenge you, push you and you push them to be your best. And if it, you, you may have a circle of friends who you guys are all in different stages doing different stuff, but you're all being successful. And I, and I have a group. I have a group of those. I have some great friends that are doing a lot of great things in different areas of their lives. And they push me, whether it's to be a better, fa better father, a better husband, you know, better investor, better, you know, um, from a health perspective, getting exercise in. You know, I see them doing things and I take a little bit from that. I get a little motivation from them and that, you know, businesses. I see them starting businesses and doing things, you know, 
those things are I look at them and they're so great and I and I love to see that because it it motivates it keeps pushing me like those are the people you need people that are going to help you and 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 that you can you can set up and see like that that's where I need to go like you're inspiring me to move further and further and get out of my comfort zone and grow more and more and more those are the people we need to be around but that that is you know again we talking about living as an heir and flowing as an heir you know you 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 don't do it by yourself you definitely have to seek God in all things and God is going to put people in your life to help you get there and you have to understand relationships that are God ordained for for the purpose that you're going towards and they may not be people who you would normally talk to they may not be somebody who you're used to hanging around. They may not look like you. They may not talk like you, dress like you, sound like you, but they have your answer. And you have to be aware of that. You have to be open and willing to hear that and talk to those people and build the, the, those relationships because they can contain that can be God's one of the doors that God is opening for you through that person. So with that, as always, I thank you guys for listening. I pray that uh, you hear my heart in this, you know, again, it's building relationships, making sure the people that are closest to you, that they're helping you to grow. Those are they're helping you to grow. They're pushing you to be the best you as possible. And it's so important. And we have to make sure we're doing that because that's the way we grow to be kingdom heirs. That's the way we move. And, and that's the way we continue to flow. So, again, I'm Ricky Thomas. Thank you so much for listening. I pray that everybody has a great week. And remember, as a kingdom heir, you were created to flow. So flow on. God bless.